All right, what's going on, guys? I got this really dumb idea in the middle of thinking of some other video stuff. So, I'm, I've am i decided to rank every Saw Trap in the Saw series. I don't really know what compelled me to do this, but I just wanted to do it. So, here I am. I've got a bunch of traps on here. So most I know, most I do not. There's a few that uh, I don't know, actually. So I'm going to have to be looking those up in between because I have not seen Spiral. So I don't know any of those traps. But for the most part, I have a good grasp on what all these traps are. So at least there's that. I will say I am ranking these traps in four categories. The first category is their function. What are they supposed to do? The next category is originality. How original is this trap? I get that's kind of a weird category, but you got to have some sort of originality. You can't have five of the same trap that just do, are just slightly different because then it gets kind of boring. The next category is brutality. If you were to die to this trap, how bad would it be? Would you suffer at all, or would it be really quick? Because, you know, if I was dying, I think I'd want to end it as fast as possible, and, you know, not have it be long and drawn out. So the first trap on our list is the 10 pint sacrifice. Now, you don't... Some of these traps have really confusing names. So, the Ten Pine Sacrifice is the trap at the end of Saw 5, where these two people, I forgot their names, I'm just not going to reference them unless I know them, because honestly, I don't want to put that much work into this. I'm feeling pretty lazy. But, you have to sacrifice ten pints of blood to these machines, and originally, there were five. So, you know, you could see how that works. But at the end of the movie, it was actually revealed that the five survivors were supposed to make it through all the trials to this specific part. Because then each person only has to share two pints of their blood, which is not a lot, and is definitely survivable. But in the way they did it, they just haphazardly walked along killing people. So now there's two left. And if I remember correctly, they did they did survive. I'll have to do my research after that. I'm pretty sure they survived. But five pints each is just a lot. And if you just happen to have a condition where you're if you have if you happen to have like a blood condition, then that shit sucks because you're kind of fucked in this situation. But I will say, this is a very, very good trap. I'll put it in... I'll put it in B, just because the, the standards behind it are pretty wonky for how you get there. But I will say, if you manage to get there with four other people, then you're most likely living. So it would not be that bad. So this is... The final trap in, I believe, Saw 6. Or not the final trap, but it's the final trap behind the, the Doctor, or whatever his story is. Or, not the Doctor, the insurance person. So, the lore behind this trap is that the, the insurance salesman denied, he denied his coverage to one specific person, and it was, uh... A father and a husband of someone that of two people that show up at the end of the movie they're really important but what it is important is that there was a clause that allowed him to not cover and he chose to not cover so he is put in a situation after going through all these other traps where he is then put on his own test to see if the family will forgive him for not saving their husband or not. And of course, they choose. The mother says she cannot do it. 
but the son says he can. He pulls the lever and kills the insurance salesman. And this trap, let me tell you, it is really fucked up. It basically, it's basically one giant rotating arm that swings down and injects a bunch of acid into you. And the dude is in pain this whole time. He's, he's screaming, he's crying, his fucking body gets cut in half because of the acid. It is really, really brutal. And fuck, man. If I had to choose to go out that way, that shit would suck. It is very much survivable. It depends on, I guess, how good, how much charisma you would have in that kind of situation. But your your odds are still pretty low. It's It's just really bad. But you definitely could escape it. It's very, very bloody. Very brutal. I do love that in a saw trap. I love it when the traps are really fucked up. Because, I don't know, I, I just really like gore in my horror movies. So I'll also put this... Uh, I'll put this... I'll put this on a, at a B. Nothing, nothing super... Actually, mm, I'll keep it at B for now. I might change it later. Okay, next up, we have Amanda's Test. Now, Amanda's Test is very confusing very strange but in saw 3 amanda was put under a test for her loyalty to john because she started making her games after saw 2 she started making her games impossible which is a very big problem according to john because you know i the people need to learn something out of this and they can't really learn if they're dead so Amanda is unknowingly put under a test, however, because of some fuckery with Hoffman, she's kind of put in this unwinnable situation because of her former problem as a junkie. She accident she was accidentally behind the well the the accident that killed John's dot killed John's child. I can't remember if it was a son or daughter, but John's child was killed because Amanda and Cecil broke into a clinic when they were not supposed to be there. And that caused John's child to die. John was unaware of Amanda being involved, so he only went after Cecil. But Hoffman threatens Amanda with the information that he somehow found out. I don't remember how he found it out. He just found it out. But he threatens to tell Amanda that she was behind it or that she was also involved in it so she ends up having to go against her and she ends up shooting the doctor that is taking care of john's cancer in the third movie and she does end up dying overall it's a really weird test they never really specified anything with it in that movie they only brought it up, like, near the end after she shot Lynn, which is pretty weird. I don't really, I don't really like it that much. But I will say, actually, no, I don't really know what to say. It's just kind of weird. They don't really explain it until the later movies, which the later movies get really convoluted, so that doesn't help. So it goes in D. Next up, we have the Angel Trap. The Angel Trap is... In my honest opinion, one of the most iconic Saw traps. Basically, this detective in Saw 4, she is investigating some of the... She is investigating what happened to, I believe... I don't remember who it was. It wasn't Rig. It was his partner from the second movie. But he, she's investigating, and Amanda puts her in this trap and this trap is impossible there was actually revealed to be no way to escape but it was a very very cool trap not in the I'll, I'll get to that later okay but it's just really cool so what you had to do was you had to put your hand in this container of acid to get the key which is already really fucked but to add on to it, you know, 
the, the key is an acid. You got to get it out fast or the, the key's just going to fucking melt. So, like the fucking boss she is, she manages to get the key, but after she puts it into the lock, she doesn't let go. And what makes it so iconic is that the trap rips her rib cage out and makes her look like an angel with her uh, torn out ribs. And the visual of that at the end when she dies is very cool. Of course, I'm going to have to dock some points due to it being an impossible trap, something that will become, you know, known for. But this was a very, very good trap. And I do think it deserves its spot at low A at least because of how good of a trap it is. Next up is the bathroom. The bathroom is the first trap we ever see in a Saw movie. And it is Saw 1, which is, in my opinion, the best Saw movie ever. If it stayed off as a one-off movie, then I don't think anybody would have complained because Saw 1 was just so... I wouldn't say groundbreaking, but it was such an interesting first movie. But the bathroom is also very iconic. It shows up multiple times. It shows up across movies. It's mentioned a lot. There's still People are still talking about Adam and whether or not he would have survived or whether or not he did survive. I think it's still a huge debate on whether he did or didn't die. But we'll get on to it. So the bathroom is what it sounds like. It's a bathroom where two people are chained to these giant metal pipes. In the center of this room is a dead body, which we later find out to be John. And he has a gun with one bullet in it. And I, don't, I won't explain the entire trap, but things to note are... The tub that Adam wakes up in, as well as the mirror, the cigarette, and other things that would somewhat hit towards an escape, but not really. Because the real purpose of this trap is for Gordon, one of the trap, one of the people in the trap, is to is for Gordon to kill Adam. That is how those are the win conditions. And of course, throughout the entire movie he decides not to kill Adam, whether it be through some sort of bond or whether they, he wants to get them both out. For some reason, or for whatever reason, Adam does not die. So, of course, Zep has to come all the way over and kill Gordon because he failed his test. But Adam gets up and fucking beats Zep to death like a real homie and saves Gordon's life. And I should also mention, this is where Gordon uh, sawed off his fucking foot, which is absolutely insane. I mean, this, this man saw, like, could, like, could you do that? I don't think a lot of people could saw their own foot off. Like, that is, that is insane. That is absolute insanity. And honestly... One of the most iconic traps in the series, one of the best traps in a saw in the saw franchise, and I will put this at S. The bedroom trap. Okay, the bedroom trap. Very, very simple trap. This guy, well, he's not a very kind person. He uh R words people. And so he's taken to this room where he has the chance to either cut off his or not he has the chance to either cut out his eyes or just straight up die because the trap has a time limit and if you don't complete it within the time limit then you're just kind of filleted to death it rips off all your limbs it's a very convoluted trap but i will say i do like the premise of him having to take his own eyes out now you could in fact survive this trap but you would be blind for life. So there is that there. We also don't get to see if the trap is uh, actually rigged. 
because he does it at the he only takes his second eye out at the last second and by then the 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 time limit has already run out so i don't know i don't properly know if it was impossible or not but for this purpose i'm gonna say that he was just really slow and that he just kind of fucked up and you don't want to be at this this trap is this trap is gonna fuck you up not only will you be blind for life but you could also just straight up die in it in the most gruesome way possible which is having both your arms and legs torn off and then you're just kind of left there to bleed to death and that's that is pretty fucked i will put this at a strong b next up we have the brazen bull the brazen bull is a record is it like an actual thing that was theorized to exist and how it works both in person both in real life and in the song movie is that there's a person trapped in this bowl that's made of bronze or some kind of metal and well they're just kind of burned to death in there well they're not they're not burned to death in the bowl but there's fire surrounding it and the heat just burns them because you know it's hot but the reason it's called the brazen bowl is because the pe when the people would be screaming it would come out it, the it was designed in such a way that the person screaming would actually sound like a bull screaming so that's why it's called the brazen bull thank you for joining me on my history lesson but this trap very fucked up it is meant to punish a supposed saw survivor which he was uh not by and he was so this guy he was supposed to be a jigsaw survivor which he was not he lied about it and he made up this entire story where he had to support his own body weight by sticking two hooks into or two uh hooks into his chest and he had to pull himself up like that or something along those lines and hoffman wanted to test him he wanted to test this guy and actually see if he could do it and of course he could not he basically ripped out one of his pecs almost saving his wife's life but unfortunately she gets trapped and she burns to death in the brazen bowl now this is very this is a very brutal way to go burning to death takes 20 minutes and that's if you're on fire and you're not even on fire here you're just getting it's just getting so hot that well you feel like you're burning to death but you're not actually on fire so this is a very fucked up trap to go to and we never did get to find out if it was possible or not we just got we just got it based off this one guy that just kind of like i don't really know he just kind of made up his own story and that's the reason why we're here but i will say good trap good design uh see next is the bucket head trap this is the first after saw this is the first trap in saw seven so saw seven is very is a very strange movie I believe it's Saw 7, right? Nope, Saw 7 is Saw 3D. Uh, whoops, my bad. Saw 8, Jigsaw. <laughs> okay, that's that's my bad. But Saw 8 is a very strange movie. And we kind of get this playing from the very beginning. This is the very first of the tests that Jigsaw conducted. But the Buckethead Trap is a very interesting trap. Because th there's five people trapped in bucket heads and they're slowly getting pulled toward these saws now four people figure out how to get out they figure out that all you have to do is cut yourself on the saw a little 
which is a hint that Jigsaw mentioned in his trap in his little monologue. However, we get one person that doesn't get out because he was still passed out or some shit. And this is where one of the rare scenes where Jigsaw shows some humanity, or like he shows a a bit of kindness towards a victim, and he actually goes out and saves that guy before he dies. And of course, he becomes the new Jigsaw in that movie, recreating the very first Saw trap with new victims in order to weed out corrupt police. Now, I will say, this trap, very cool looking, and also very terrifying. I would give it an A. Next up, we have the suspended cage. I'm going to have to look this one up because I'm actually not super aware of it. I do believe... Okay, it is it is in Saw 7, and it is the same movie that the Brazen Bolt is in. Now, this is a very, very weak... This is a, this is a weak trap. It looks like... Yeah, okay. So from what I've seen, the suspended cage is a very weak Saw trap, considering what we've gotten throughout the series. It's a cage suspended over, well, spikes. And this is just so boring for what could have well, for what we like could have done but and it's very easy to escape you break out the bottom and then simply swing across because the pit isn't that or the the spikes are just not that not that spread out and this is this is a very weak saw trap for considering what we've gotten so far and i don't think i don't i think it's pretty fair that i put it at f as so far, the weakest trap. Next, we have the shotgun carousel. This is this is also a pretty iconic trap. But basically, there's six people, and you gotta choose four people that die. It's as simple as that. It lands on a person, you gotta kill them, or you gotta stab your hand and spare them. Very simple, very effective. But I think what does it the most is that these people are not like unconscious they are actively trying to convince you not to kill them while also trying to convince you to kill the others which makes it for a very very terrifying situation now could you survive yeah you could survive it de it kind of depends on who you are but if you're actually in the trap then you have a one of you have a one in three chance of surviving there's six people but no would it be a one in you have a you have a one in you have a one in third chance of surviving yeah because two out of six people survive that's math but your odds are not good if, your odds are not very good but very good trap also very iconic trap one of the more better traps in saw 3d so i'll give it i'll give it an a next is the ceiling jars trap this continues the theme of the 10 pints trap where five are supposed to survive but they do not so the ceiling jar trap is i'd say one of the more brutal traps in saw but basically, these four people are in a sewer crypt area where there are four sewer grates, but they require keys. And basically, these keys are hidden in these ceiling jars. However, you only have a certain amount of time to get in. And what the people don't realize is that you can actually just fit all, you could actually fit all four people in one well hole but they're selfish they don't realize that everyone fucks off to their own hole and one guy is left to die and he's basically he's basically shredded to pieces these four nail bombs are in the corner and when they explode holy fuck does this guy just get torn apart it is it is a mess now could you survive if you were smart yes you could survive i'm sure anyone with two brain cells could realize that these 
holes are really big and could definitely fit multiple people without any trouble. So this is a very easy trap to survive. And it's basically just up to the people you're with to kind of just, <laughs> if they're idiots or not. But I'll say it's a, it's a B. Next up, we have Chain Hangers. Chain Hangers is... I need to look at to look up chain hangers actually so be right back okay it's not what i originally thought it was so chain hangers is again saw eight saw jigsaw movie whatever but this is a very very difficult trap to explain basically these people or these four three people they're being pulled on a chain towards uh, well, a pulley, and if it gets too close, then they just kind of, you know, die. But they have three vials of what look to be poison, and Jigsaw basically explains that this one girl, she she robbed the she robbed this woman, and this woman had an asthma attack and actually died when she had the chance to save her by giving her inhaler. But well, and they, I promise this is important. Because Jigsaw asks her how much a life is worth, and this this is specifically for her because the person she robbed, she's supposed to compare... Okay, I need to rewind. There's th three syringes, and these syringes each have a number on them, and the number is supposed to signify how much money she stole from the person. So when Jigsaw asks her how much is a life worth, she's supposed to guess the one that the the correct amount of money that she stole but she just she pisses off she doesn't want to do it and so another guy comes up with the amazing idea to just stab her with all three and see what happens of course that's uh that, that that's not how it works and she immediately starts dying because of course uh two two vials of poison and one vial of antidote don't exactly cancel each other out. And, of course, she dies. But they did get the correct syringe, technically. And, well, the other three live, and she's the only one that dies. I will say I have to give some creative, po some creative points to just stabbing her with all three. But... If you do, in fact, die from this trap, which I will say, very easy to survive. But if you want to die from this trap, uh, you're in for a pretty brutal death either way. It's either uh, acid or whatever the fuck was going to happen if the if your neck snaps, I, don't, I guess. I don't know. And it's, it's a pretty good trap. I'll put it at B. The classroom. The classroom is a very, very brutal trap. This guy, he's trapped in a classroom and he has basically five chains stuck on him and one minute to get them all off. I forgot the reason why he had the chains on. I think it was sexual harassment, but I'm not too sure. But he has like a cut he has like seven or five chains in total where he has a few on his arm a few on his leg and of course one in his jaw which i'm fucking shocked that they even got there now of course he gets all the other chains off except for well the elephant in the room the chain in his fucking jaw which of course you're never getting that out and this was the start this was not the start actually but it was one of the more prevalent of the impossible saw traps because of course you're not gonna fucking tear your jaw off in a in less than a minute and then also live and it also comes out that the doors were locked so he was not surviving no matter what and i think because of that specifically it gets into d it's a very brutal trap and if you're in it, you're just going to realize just how fucked you are because, of course, you're not going to get out. But 
I just think it's D just because it's basically impossible. Cupid's Arrow. Now, Cupid's Arrow is one of the more ironic saw traps where basically it's this couple strapped into, well, they're, they're, they're kind of strapped together and they have these giant spikes through them. And what Jigsaw explains is that the woman, it, the woman had, on the woman's side, her spikes are sticking out of non-vital areas. But for the husband's side, it is sticking through very vital areas where if he would have to have them pulled out, he would most certainly bleed to death. So a good example of this would be like, her spike would be in her shoulder, while his spike would be uh, through his neck. So, you know, if you pulled that out, obviously, you're kind of screwed. Now, could you survive this trap? If you were the person, if you were the person that had the non-vitals, that had the spikes sticking through your non-vitals, then yeah, you would have a pretty good chance of surviving because it is specifically stated non-vital areas, which means you could definitely live it. But as for the other dude, you're kind of just screwed as you're left to bleed out if the other person wants to live. And, well... I think it's pretty obvious what happens. The woman uh, immediately starts pulling her spikes out and the husband is just kind of bleeding to death. And this is a trap that would suck to go through because either way, you're either pulling out spikes or you're bleeding to death. And let me tell you, those are not fun. So I think that goes in a C. Now the cyanide box, the cyanide box is well it is what it sounds like to me and this is a very strange trap because well it's it's just hard to explain so as saw 3d is happening there are these cops trying to track its well where it's taking place because it's not happening live but they're just trying to discover what happened. And the cyanide box is basically these cops, they set off a trap, and they're just killed by cyanide. It's more one of the more weak designs for a actual trap. And it it just kind of sucks, I'll be honest. So I think it gets another F. Just because you use cyanide doesn't mean it's a good trap. The drill chair. The drill chair is very interesting it's one of the very few traps where we specifically never see the person after we don't know what they did but they do survive it's an odd trap and this is in the first saw movie but basically it's pretty self-explanatory this guy has a drill going towards his brain and you got to shut the device off before that happens originally this was meant for uh, Detective Tap and Detective and his partner, I can't remember his name at the moment, I'm blanking on it, and I don't want to sound racist by trying to guess his name because he's Asian, so I'll just leave it at Tap's partner. But they actually, so this trap is meant for them because they're on the, pers they're on the chase for Jigsaw, but they actually end up finding his hideout and they catch Jigsaw in the act while he's there. Now, this is a very interesting conundrum because Jigsaw decides to activate the trap as they're there and as they're telling him to get on the ground. So basically, he's just kind of testing them on the spot. And he tells them that there's a key that, a, that they can use to get to the... or to stop the trap. And like the cartoon villain he is, he gives them a full ring of keys... That would definitely take, it would, it would take way longer to figure out which, to try like all the keys than to just like manually stop the trap. And of course, Tap's partner realizes this and he just starts fucking shooting the trap, which ends up stopping it. So the guy does live, but this is, it's just such a weird trap that it, that I can only really put it in C just because of how strange it is. Now the electric 
bathtub is, well, it is what it sounds. Most of these traps are kind of what they sound, and then these, and then most of the time they're like, well, what the fuck? But this is, I mean, it's a pretty simple trap. There's a bathtub in the middle, and there's a bunch of electricity, or there's a bunch of like exposed wires or something. Something that implies that, you know, you will get shocked. And basically, what is supposed to happen, because this is, again, supposed to be the cooperation puzzle, is there's supposed to be five people that each take a different amount of electricity that is non-lethal in order to get, in order to unlock the door. That's what's supposed to happen. But instead, they end up turning on each other. They just push this one chick in to get fucking electrocuted to death and that's how they solve it now pain you will go through it in this trap and you i gotta say being electrocuted it sucks it's not fun but you do have some good odds of surviving this trap if once again you are well if you're smart and i'll put this at a c just because it, I'd say getting electrocuted is just kind of kind of worse than really all the other stuff. Now, Eric's test. Eric's test is very non-specific in this because well, while the uh, while Eric's test itself is here, I don't See, okay, no, okay, I was stupid, never mind. So, scrap what I just said. Eric's test is all about... Uh, I actually don't know what it's all about. But, basically, he's on this case. His son is trapped in the nerve gas house. And he, he wants to save his son, but he's trying to interrogate Jigsaw on where the house's location is. Basically, to say, a bunch of fuckery happens. Jigsaw tells him the location, and he gets there. But he is trapped in the, well, he's trapped in the bathroom. Because it actually turns out that this trap takes place just above the bathroom trap. Or it takes place under a connection of tunnels that lead to the bathroom trap. But Eric ends up getting trapped there. He has a fight with Amanda. And then... It, his test actually continues on to the next movie, which is Saw 4. And Saw 4 is all about Rig. We'll get into Rig's test later, but Eric's test is all about how much he trusts his partner. And, well, he ends up failing, so obviously, I guess he didn't trust his partner that much. But Eric is... Eric goes through a lot. He... Almost, he believes he loses his son, which he does not. He doesn't lose his son, and he actually never gets to know that because he's stuck in all these traps. But he gets chained into the bathroom trap. He has to break his own foot, and he's he's doing all this without knowing that his son, or believing his son is quite possibly dead. And he does he dies in the end, which is really shit. So Eric's, so I'll put Eric's test at B. I would have, I would put it at A, but just because of all the pain Eric had to go through during his test, it's, it's really fucked. It's really, really fucked. Now the, the fatal five, the fatal five is, I believe the first saw trap in Saw 6 or whatever. Saw 5. Now, the Fatal 5 is specifically about, well, I don't know if it's specifically about this one trap, but I'm just going to assume it's the entire thing. So the Fatal 5 is basically revolved around these five people that were involved in an incident that helped cover it up, whether it be media suppression or, you know, just lying to the police about what happened. But that is that is this trap's theme. And 
during Saw 5, there is the theme throughout throughout that all of these traps can be done with five people. But the five people are selfish and they end up sacrificing each other along the way, making it out with only two people when all five of them could have survived. But this trap or this this arc, I don't really know what to call it. It's it's not it's not good. It's not good. The people are really dumb. You could easily survive it if you just didn't <laughs> if you just like weren't selfish i guess but either way this is a not fun trap to be in <laughs> and for that i think i'd put it I'll, I'll put it at d because you can still survive okay i quick i just quickly read up on the finger trap and this is a pretty brutal trap so basically you're in this bathtub and the bathtub is constantly filled with water and to get out you have to sacrifice a finger or a multiple fingers i'm not too sure i this is from spiral i never saw spiral but basically the finger trap it's pretty self-explanatory your finger gets cuts off or i guess you drown and it's kind of boring so i'll put it at d it is survivable i don't think we saw the guy survive but it seems survivable i'm not too sure it's it's it just kind of sucks as a trap i'll be honest not one of the best traps next is the freezer room trap the freezer room trap is from saw 3 and it's pretty self-explanatory you're covered in soaking water and you're in this industrial freezer and you have to get this person you have to get this person out specifically you need to save this person there's a bit of lore behind the trap i'll save it for uh jeff's test which i think it should be on here uh jeff's test yeah there it is i will say i do not think it's possible to survive the trap maybe if Je i there's this whole debate on if jeff was you know smart or faster and not fucking stupid then a lot of people could have survived his test but in this case i think it's just an impossible scenario I don't think it's physically possible for Jeff to save this woman who is completely naked and who is, uh, she's basically being constantly showered with water in an industrial freezer. And forgive me for thinking this, but I don't think it's very possible. And this trap is brutal. Freezing to death is not fun. She basically turns into an icicle at the end of the trap. So just for... And I'll put it at C because it is a very unique trap. There is no other trap like this in the Saw series where you have to stop someone from freezing to death. And because of that, it gets some pity points from being D or F. And there you have it. Next up is the furnace. The furnace is again from Saw 2. And well, it makes it pretty obvious what it is but you have to crawl into this furnace for well the nerve gas uh it's it's an antidote to the nerve gas that these guys are bothered with and there's a bit of lore behind it because toby the guy in the trap actually helped kidnap these other people into the saw trap so of course jigsaw says here you go uh have just have one for free so he goes in to claim his prize, but what do you know, the furnace locks behind him. And the slow, slowly, the furnace is being lit on fire. And there is a way to get out. There is a way to get out. It's just that he's on the wrong side. And by the time he realizes it, it's already too late. The trap, is, the exit is already engulfed in fire. So, fuck. But they do manage to uh, break out one of the furnace windows to have Toby kind of like, uh, he'd try and like contort his way out. And they, uh, the other people beg for him, oh, put the, put the syringe out, put the syringe out. But he doesn't. He ends up putting his, his, one of his arms out and his head out 
and he's basically stuck there and he's left to burn to death and once again burning to death not fun the brazen bull not fun now i'll give it a bit more points i'll give it i'll bump it up to a b above the brazen bull specifically because this one is more possible than the brazen bull the brazen bull was based on a lie and some pretty flawed science but the furnace there was a, there was an actual escape method so you know it gets points for that the gallows the gallows is a very psychologically torturous trap basically you are either the people in the trap or you're observing the trap and either way this sucks basically there's two people in these well in the gallows and you have the choice of choosing who gets to live but of course it's the classic conundrum of one dies later the other one has nothing to really live for and it's of course the insurance salesman put in this position because he chose whether he chose that a man should die so now he has to choose which one of these people should die and he gets the choice between his assistant which he's known for a while but he has no known family no known relatives no one that would miss him if he were to just vanish off the earth meanwhile i one of his employees is a woman with a family she's very well known very liked however she's old and she has cancer so it's the choice between the blank slate or a woman who's doomed to die anyways and the guy actually ends up making a pretty good decision here he just chooses the blank the guy his assistant with a blank slate because let's be honest this woman has family if you were going to choose between a person who would be missed and a person who would not be missed i think it's relatively simple maybe it's not maybe it's just me but this is this is a daunting trap and i would say this gets an a because you have a good chance of living but that's not what it's about i think the purpose of this trap is to just kind of fuck with you because you decided to play god choosing who lives and who dies the glass coffin is one of my personal favorites because of the plot twist it comes with it's teased throughout the movie to be this huge fucking trap or with giant significance to hoffman and his test and what ends up happening is the police that are after him specifically one agent i think it's stroud i think i'm pronouncing that right but stroud is after hoffman and of course hoffman gets put into the glass coffin and of course we think it's all over we think hoffman's dead but then the tape comes on and we learn that this trap was not meant for well it was not meant for stroud to something happened it was it was jigsaw slowly revealing that this coffin was actually the safe spot and that stroud would be left to be crushed to death in these in this basically like star wars trash compactor where the walls close in on him it is a horrifying reveal as you realize that hoffman got away with being jigsaw for the entire movie and he basically gets front row seats to watching well to watching stroud die it is an incredible trap one of my personal favorites now could you survive yeah <laughs> that's where it kind of comes into question the glass coffin is kind of a tricky trap because of course there's only one way to get out but there's also no way to get out if you're not in this coffin so you're kind of left to just <laughs> hopefully be the guy in the coffin so i think for that specific purpose it gets an a instead of an s specifically because it's not a fair trap next up is the glass grinder trap i am not familiar with this trap so from what i'm reading it looks like there are two people involved in this trap one person it sounds like is getting pelted to death with glass and 
the other the, the per there's two people in this trap and one person is slowly getting pelted to death with small glass shards while another person has 20 seconds to dig through a can or a, like a trash can full of glass shards to find the key to get out and if they don't do this the first person dies this is a strange trap not just because i'm reading it for the first time but because it's also just a weird trap and i'm not too sure what to say about it really it's pretty self-explanatory it's a glass grinder i think it gets a c for good originality but it's lacking in the brutality department and also just because escape doesn't really seem viable in this the hangman's noose now this this is a very scary trap this is a part of the what i like to call the no evil bundle but basically in soft 3d there is a whole theme of see no evil hear no evil and speak no evil and this is see no evil and of course bobby is in this situation where he has to guide his friend to where he is and bobby has of course, the key to his escape and if he doesn't escape in time he gets hung hanged he gets hanged i think that's the proper term but basically he just has to guide his friend over throw him the key and all's fine and well but the twist comes when the dude doesn't catch the key and you're just kind of given this oh oh shit moment as he real as the guy's like did you throw the key and but and he's just like staring at him in disbelief and then the trap he runs out of time the trap activates and he's thrown into the air and he's hung to death this is a very scary trap this is also a really fucked up trap to be in because of course uh so hanging yourself is not a pain, very painless way to go so i think uh, a or b a or b a or b b i think it gets a b the horsepower trap the horsepower trap is <laughs> it's kind of like a break from the norm in the traditional sense i think all of the three people are like murderers or they're like neo-nazis or something it is a it's a really bizarre trap in the best way possible but this guy is basically super glued to a car seat with his girlfriend uh, with his girlfriend under the car which is suspended in midair and his friend suspended in front of the car hanging in front of it and this guy has about like 30 seconds to reach the accelerator and turn off the trap or it's not 30 seconds but it's 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 not very it's not very long but the car is constantly speeding up and once it gets to a, once it gets to a certain speed it basically lands off or it gets it stops being suspended i guess it just breaks off its platform and it crushes the girl's head and it plows through the guy who's suspended midair and it, like it plows through him this guy is this guy fucking explodes it is insane <laughs> but it's also just so bizarre and it's also so blatantly impossible because this guy's entire back is glued to a to like a car seat there's no way of getting out of that but i think just because of how insane it is it, get, it just gets an a from me like this this trap is keep in mind impossible but it's just so insane <laughs> i just have to put it up there <laughs> you gotta understand okay next up is the ice block trap the ice block trap is a part of uh detective riggs test but this is the final trap in Soft 4, where Wig was supposed to take his time throughout his test so that his partner, Eric, would live. But of course, this does not happen. He gets there with just a few seconds remaining, and 
he is left to die. Now, this trap is also uh, connected to, well, Hoffman, or it was supposed to be. Hoffman was supposed to be electrocuted in this trap, but he is revealed to be Jig the uh, acting Jigsaw at the end. And of course, Eric just kind of dies for nothing. So, with that being said, I put it at a D just because it could have been so easily prevented and it's not necessarily pertaining to his death. His death is fucking brutal. His head gets crushed between two blocks of ice, but I think having, having Hoffman in there was also pretty unnecessary. The impalement wheel. Now, the impalement wheel is once again a part of the bundle of that speak no evil thing of that uh speak no evil see no evil hear no evil bundle and this is speak no evil like no this is see no evil this is see no evil that's what it is but basically this woman right here she is on a wheel and she only has a certain amount of time before she gets rotate it into these spikes that will impale her eyes and mouth very simple trap very evil trap because of course you're you're there for the entire thing and you're just kind of watching as this happens and if the person doesn't get you out in time which i forget the specifications of i just know that the dude doesn't get out that the uh the poor woman doesn't get out but you're basically kind of fucked because you see your own death coming towards you. And I think I'll give this one a C. Jeff's test is an immediate F. I don't need to explain why. Jeff is extremely slow. It pertains to his son dying and his daughter, but he ends up dying at, at the beginning of like Saw 4. Jeff is just so infuriating that I can't not put him at an F. I'm sorry. If you've seen the movies, you understand. Uh, if you haven't, <laughs> do your own research. Because I guarantee you will be just as pissed off as everyone else who's seen the movies. Next up is the flammable jelly trap. This is a Saw 1 trap. Very unique trap. This man is covered in flammable jelly. And he is given... Well, he's given a candle and a safe, and he's basically told, go find the code written on the wall. So, he has to be careful, or, well, you know, he burns to death, while he is also walking on glass shards, completely naked. So, you're either getting out by looking for the code, or you're kind of dying. And I don't think... They specified whether or not this trap was impossible or not, but I will say from seeing it and from from seeing the movie and from thinking about it a lot, this trap should not be possible. There's, I don't think there's any real way to, well, escape. There is, I guess there's a very slim chance of getting out, but then again, you're, you're holding this candle and either you're burn you're being burned to death which is what happens or you're kind of just bleeding out from stepping on glass shards all the time it's not an easy trap and i definitely say it would be left in c tier for its ambiguity of uh escapability next we have the shotgun keys trap this this is a good trap i like this trap specifically because it kind of turns that old like oh like you have the bullet shoot into the other person but i uh, kind of put the other way so jigsaw basically puts a key on a counter and he says here's your key to freedom and there's a shotgun next to it the woman manages to pick up the shotgun because the guy is missing a leg i'll get to that later and she basically takes aim but the dude notices something or no. Okay, I gotta edit that part. So the shotgun keys trap. I like this trap. It kind of turns the old trope of, oh, uh, have the bullets fire into the other person. But it's a good trap, you know? 
So basically, Jigsaw, he comes into the room, and he says, this shotgun shell right here is your key to freedom. And he just puts it on the table next to the shotgun, and he leaves. And the woman, thinking, well, it's pretty obvious, you gotta shoot the guy, she goes to aim, but the guy realizes at the last second that the gun is rigged to fire against her because of how the gun is built. And of course, he's right, she shoots herself in the neck, and she dies. But the other guy also realizes that, well, Jigsaw meant it literally as the key to freedom. He put the key in the shotgun shell. And had she listened, had she heard him out, the key would have not been destroyed in whatever the accident it was. Because the key was like, of course, it was obviously shredded. It was, it was in like, it was in a shotgun shell. What, I don't know what else you would expect from that. But basically, very brutal trap. I think I actually give this one the second S because it is also very easily survivable and it's very easy to survive. This is one of the only traps that I think has a gun involved other than like Eric had a gun and of course Wig had his gun, but this is the only, this is the only trap that revolves around a gun which i think it's in and itself is impressive enough that he's gone this far without having any guns but it's pretty cool the knife chair the knife chair is jigsaw's very first trap this is basically his punishment for cecil for killing his wife he gets put into this knife chair where he has to push his face through the knives to uh hit his he has to hit the uh the the button in order to escape but you know this is jigsaw's first trap and the chair just kind of falls apart on him i don't know if jigsaw anticipated this or not but he leads cecil who charges into him like a like a moron he basically runs into him at full speed and he runs into a bunch of barbed wire and kills himself that way now this trap very flawed i will give it d because it is very flawed i'm not giving it d because it's his first trap but it's just because it's like you could so easily get out of it next up are the laser collars the laser collar is a very very unique trap it is so cool i'll put it at a and i'll tell you why it deserves an a so first off there's lasers which is super cool but next off this is meant as a double on taunt because the jigsaw of the movie is in there along with a corrupt police captain now the jigsaw fakes his death and he gets him to confess all of his sins to what is supposed to be the John Kramer Jigsaw, who is supposedly alive or has an apprentice. But, well, he doesn't. And he confesses and it, the plot twist comes where... I for, I'm, I'm blanking on his name. So this Jigsaw... So basically, uh, the Saw 8 Jigsaw comes out and reveals... You just confessed all your shit to me. And, of course, we do get the death scene where the lasers converge in and turn him into a meat plant or a demogorgon of sorts. It looks so cool. And I cannot preface how cool it looks. I'm not showing most of the stuff in here just because it's like... <laughs> I don't. I think my video would immediately get flagged. So this is the best I can do. The lawnmower trap. The lawnmower trap is f it's a brief mention in saw seven where it's just kind of like oh yeah i was in this lawnmower trap we had to hit each other off in this room full of lawnmowers until someone fell off and died it's just a sub it's, it's just such a bizarre trap that <laughs> it, the, the, the trap is just so bizarre and it's so non-realistic or it's not non-realistic, but it's just so cartoony in a way. 
And I don't think it's up to like the normal tr saw trap standard that we could have gotten. Next up is the leg wires trap. Now the leg wires trap is pretty simple. This guy gets his foot stuck and you got to solve this puzzle or else, you know, you're, you're losing your foot. And I will say, I think it's a little bit too simple for my taste. So we'll put it at D, but I will preface that this is a good trap. This is in fact a good trap. Trust me. Watch, watch Saw 8 if you want to. Next up, we have the Lover's Quarrel. Or the Lover's Triangle, as it's called. I thought it was Quarrel, my bad. But basically, this trap, pretty simple. There's two brothers that are in this trap and one woman at the top. And this saw is designed in a way so that when you push it, it goes towards the other person. So it's this constant fight. But Jigsaw also gives them the option that, you know, you, know, you could just put it in the middle, kill the woman. And this is immediately obvious when the woman starts rooting for whichever brother is winning because, well, she cheated on the both of them with each other. It's a very weird situation, but it's an all, it's, it's an all right trap. I'll put it at C. The revolve, the magnum eye hole, which, which is, is not what it's called. This is the revolver. This is, this is like the revolver door trap or something. It's not the magnum eye hole. But it's basically the first trap in Saw 2, or the first, or the second trap we're introduced to, because we're introduced to, of course, the nerve gas house. But the Magnum Eye Hole trap is, it's a pretty good trap. It's, it takes you off guard very fast, and it, it's very easily preventable, but it's also just kind of like cartoonish in how you die. Basically, this guy is unlocking the door, the other guy's looking through the peephole, he turns the key, and he gets shot in the head. And it's kind of like, it's so easily preventable, because there's so much time he's given to register that, oh, there is a gun right there, I should move. But again, good concept, gets a B. Next up is the mausoleum trap. This is a very good trap. I'll put it at A already. But basically, one guy, he can't talk. The other guy, he can't see. So, it's kind of left up to survival of the fittest. These people are being pulled towards a pulley. And, you know, if they get too close, their necks are snapped. However, their keys are on each other's body. Or I believe it's either, it's either pretty rigged into the dudes. Well, it's already pretty rigged. If you have eyesight, I mean, you've been... If you're the guy who has eyesight, you're basically already one. That makes me reconsider it a bit. I'll move it down to C. Because I like the trap, but it's already like... It's already like very rigged against you if, you, if you're if you the blind person in this trap. So, I had to move it down, but still, pretty cool trap. Next up, we have the necktie trap. Now, the necktie trap is from Saw 5. And it's pretty self-explanatory. These people are getting dragged towards the... Uh, these people are in front of, basically, glass boxes. And they have to get out because their key's in it. And if they don't, they get swung back into the... Uh, well, into these blades. And it basically works like a reverse guillotine in a sort of way. Instead of the blade being... Pull, instead of the blade dropping towards you, you are being thrown towards the blade. I will say, very creative, very unique. And I do like the trap. Because once again, the Fatal Five, it continues the theme of all these... It turns out, all these keys actually fit everybody's lock. So, they all could have gotten out. They're just really dumb. The Needle Pit. The Needle Pit is... An especially terrifying trap in Saw 2. Basically, it is what it sounds. It's a pit of needles. There's a key in it. And the key is for, of course, the antidote to the nerve gas that they have. However, this is this is meant for another person. I can't remember his name. He's kind of an asshole. 
but she just kind of the dude just kind of throws amanda in there because she was a junkie i guess but anyways she does end up getting the key this trap just fucking sucks to go through i'll put it at b not because it's a bad trap but because of course these are hypodermic needles and it's not implied if there was something in it beforehand so then again you could just be getting a shit ton of awful diseases from this next up is the nerve gas house itself now i like the nerve gas house i really do i think it's one of the most unique saw traps ever basically the nerve gas house is one giant trap with small with smaller other traps in it where other people's like tests where it's multiple things in a row where it's like multiple traps in a row or like in a sequence of events or like some something hidden that jigsaw doesn't really tell them about it's it's unique because it's one area with a lot of other traps basically the main thing behind it is that five five or six people are infected with nerve gas and they have to make their way through these smaller other traps to either well no there is there isn't they do discover a way out but it it wasn't really intended to go down that way they were supposed to get the antidotes and then get out but of course people are people people are selfish they're kind of assholes so they end up dying one interesting conundrum in this is that the entire the entirety of what we're seeing in saw 2 is actually pre-recorded footage so as we're watching this this happened about months ago in advance so of course as that they think they're watching a lifetime it's actually well it's already happened most of the people are already dead and what we actually end up finding out is that eric's son who was in this trap was not infected with the nerve gas but he was put in there because what would happen if they found out that you know the cop that arrested them that they, his son is there with them in this trap so again really interesting trap very cool trap i think it gets an a just because it gets pretty convoluted but good trap overall next up we have the oxygen crusher and i'll put this uh that a b i'll put this at b the oxygen crusher is a good trap basically the insurance man and another old man are put in this trap where they have to hold their breath for the longest otherwise they get their well their lungs crushed and it's this giant contest of who can hold it in longer and eventually it gets to the point where the old man is sort of at the disadvantage here because he needs to breathe more often and it gets to a certain point where if you're just too far in you're just constantly gasping for air and well at that point you're just kind of dead so it gets a b for originality and brutality but i think in escapability it just depends on who has the greater lung strength now next up is the pain train well we don't have well i don't specifically remember this i did look it up and i saw that this is a very strange trap we actually see jill in the trap but it's hoffman who was testing it on her which is not obviously how it goes it's two different people it's just jill imagines herself on it and from what little we see it's that this trap is basically impossible so it gets a c but also you're being rammed with a fucking bumper car what it looks like is it's it's just at high speed i don't think jill was put in the trap i think she somehow avoided it but she does still die later on which i wish jill's death was on here still because i it's 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 not you know next up is the pendulum the pendulum is another unique saw trap but once again it would be here if it wasn't once again impossible now the pendulum is not a bad trap 
but you're slowly witnessing your own death once again as this you know giant ass blade comes slowly swinging down towards you cutting your abdomen open and there's not much else to say you can't get out there's no way to get out you're just watching your own death so it gets some it gets some cool points for you know being a pendulum but also it loses a lot of points for being inescapable the pig vat the pig vat gets a d not necessarily because it's bad but just because it's really gross so basically what happens is the the pig vat is this guy is just stuck in a giant vat and he's constantly getting pig guts and other sh gross shit dumped onto him it's it's really disgusting even for a saw trap and i it's just i i don't i don't like it man it's just really gross the pound of flesh trap now the pound of flesh trap is a very specific trap basically these two people are put in a trap and they're told lose a pound of flesh by any means necessary or these helmets are going to drill bolts into your brain and it's just a it's just a case of who's smarter who thinks fastest or who just has the most weight to lose because this one guy he starts out by hacking off parts of his uh stomach i think the parts of his organs that he doesn't need and then he starts putting that in but this other woman she cuts her entire arm off so well you can imagine who wins that in that scenario but this is also a pretty crippling trap because of course this woman had to lose her arm to get out so imagine what if you were in this trap had to do could you could you cut that could you cut off your own arm could you cut off a leg if you had to but i think it gets a b simply because of how fucked up it is and it's pretty survivable but you just got to be you know fairly smart now this next trap the puppet trap is the final trap in spiral i remember this one a little bit from a dead the dead meat video where he goes through all the deaths but i don't really understand Damned it if that makes sense but the puppet trap is very interesting because it's supposed to represent the corrupt police force and in this case the the police officer in it is meant to shoot either his dad or something like that it's a very weird trap i'll give it a c not because it's it's kind of it's kind of weird i just think it's a kind of convoluted trap to go through Next up is the quadruple shotgun hallway trap, which is in Saw 1. I didn't really consider it a trap. I didn't know it was considered a trap, but I'll put it at D just simple. It's, it's very simple. It's a trip wire. You trip the wire, you get shot. It's very simple. Next up is the rack. The rack is a horrific trap where basically you get all your limbs cut off or it's not all your limbs are cut off but you're in this well rack and your legs it starts off with your legs and then your arms that are slowly being twisted beyond the limit and then it goes to your head being twisted in a full 180 but basically this thing tears your limbs off and it is horrific to watch horrific to go through it doesn't help that Jeff is fucking stupid. And it goes in B because you are not surviving this. The razor wire maze. The, ra the razor wire maze is weird. It's in Saw 1, so it's obviously very rudimentary. But I don't understand how you could really die to this thing. Or I do understand, but it's a, it's, it's a very strange situation to find yourself in. In a, in a maze of razor wires or like barbed wire i think it gets a c just because of how strange it is next up is the razor box this also gets a c 
it's not a bad trap. The woman put into it was an idiot. She put both of her hands into this fucking trap like a moron. It pisses me off. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Next up, we have the iconic reverse bear trap. Of course, this gets an S. It shows up, I think, in almost every movie. I say almost because it doesn't show up in a few, but I'm not sure. Either way, this is the this is the staple saw trap. And you can't convince me otherwise that it's an S. Next up, we have Riggs Test. Riggs Test, I will give an A to because I think it's a good test for him. Basically, he's been on the hunt for Eric through all his life. He's neglected his his personal life, his own health, his own health, and Jigsaw decides to test him on it. So he puts them through these trials and basically tells them, okay, get there. But what Rig was supposed to do was take his time because he was on this rush and he encounters all these people that he never really stops to really help them per se. And I think it's a really, really good test. I don't remember if Rig survives, but I think it's a good test and it gets an A. The scalping seat is up next. The scalping seat, pretty horrifying. You know, you're getting scalped. It's a C. You're not going to have fun for this. And even if you were in the trap, the woman in the trap is trying to kill you anyways. So it gets a C. Next up is the sentry gun trap. I think I know what this is, but it's also like a really weird trap. I think it's just boring. So it gets an F simply because it is boring. Next up, we have the shotgun collar. The shotgun collar is an S for me. Not because it's, well, because it is, it is pretty easily survivable because, you know, you have to go through John's demands and all that but also because his life is connected to your life. And honestly, you could have survived it so easy if Jeff didn't fucking kill him. Why did he do that? But it is a good trap. And of course, we do see the aftermath, which is pretty horrifying, but very good trap nonetheless. The silent circle. The silent circle is, once again, a part of this whole see no evil thing. But this one is speak no evil. And... Basically, you are put into this trap with fish wire in your neck, and the key is basically in your throat. And you have to have it pulled out, and if you scream too much, these poles are going to come in and impale you. So, it's all about being quiet. You could either yank them, and honestly, it's all, it's all whether up to, like, you're the person in it, or you're the person... That is, trying to get someone out of it. Because either you could just fucking yank that thing or and immediately kill them. Or you could, well, draw their pain out and then have them die anyways, which is what happens in the movie. So, uh, I'll put this at a C. I, you don't want to go through it. It is survivable, but crippling for life. The grain silo. The grain silo is a unique trap. These people are put into a grain silo, which I also did not know. People die of those already, but to put it in worse conditions, there's falling blades, falling knives, falling sickles, and you basically can't move, and you're just kind of hoping that you don't get fucking cut up. There's a few close calls. One person gets hit, but they don't die. I think it gets a B. Very unique. Next up is the steam maze test. The steam maze test is A. It's a good test. This, this guy he has to guide a woman out of, well, a steam maze. And of course, it's the insurance guy again. I don't know why this was specifically for him, but, well, he has to guide this woman out. And on the surface, that's all it seems. But there's a twist to this trap because the woman is told that, well, she's going to die. She's she's going to die. And there's this trap on her neck. And the way she gets it off is by, well, killing this guy. 
kind of like with the reverse bear trap because this guy has a key sewn into his abdomen and of course you kind of got to kill him because i don't think anybody would want to willingly undergo surgery in this kind of state but it's a cool trap nonetheless next up is the subway trap this is once again another spiral trap which i am once again not familiar with as i am reading through this it looks like Hmm. Well, it looks like the trap is attached to your tongue. You were... Okay, hold on. I gotta read this. So this is a very brutal trap so I'll, now that i've read it i'll put it at b this trap is brutal basically you're on a stool and you have a bug you have a bunch of barbed wire on you and basically your tongue is stuck in this contraption and you have to jump off the the wooden stool in order to get yourself free but then again that could just kill you out right i'm not sure if it would kill you i'm about like 85 percent sure that could just like fucking kill you right then and there but again very brutal trap you either lose your tongue potentially die or get hit by a train and definitely die next up we have ezekiel banks test now i know a bit about this test it's all about corruption in the police force and all the traps he's going through i don't really like it so i'll put it at c i don't think it's bad but i don't think it's necessarily good either Next up, we have the cycle trap. The cycle trap is pers is a personal favorite of mine, just because of how intricate and how cool it is. But basically, you're put into this, you're put on this bike, right? And you're basically trapped in what's essentially a giant blender. And well, <laughs> it, it is what it sounds like what happens. You get fucking blended if you don't stop the motorcycle in time very interesting trap i recommend you check it out if you're interested in it it's very cool next up we have the venus fly trap i'll already put this at a b because it's already kind of like the the beta version of the reverse bear trap but basically this will close in on you if you don't get the key to it in time and the key is sewn in your eye so it's between you know blind in one eye and well to dying but the thing about this trap is it's all about can you cut out your own eye and you might think you you'd be able to but get put in the trap and might say otherwise next up we have the water cube now the water cube was originally meant to be impossible however uh agent stroud the fucking g he manages to escape by sticking a pen into his neck disassembling it and then being able to breathe through that which is fucking crazy he loses his voice during it because obviously but he manages to live through it, which is already insane. Because again, the trap was meant to be impossible. You're just meant to drown in it. But, you know, because of that, even more extra points. It would have gotten an A, but because Stroud escaped, it gets extra points. Next up, we have the hot wax trap. I'm not familiar with this trap because once again, it's from spiral and it looks like you just kind of got hot wax on you and from reading it that's what it is it's hot wax now this trap is very fucked up so it gets a C because either you you suffocate to death or you sever your spinal cord 
And I did not know that these fucking spiral traps went so crazy. And it's like... What? I, I, I really don't... I really don't understand this trap. It's so weird. Next up, we have the Wisdom Teeth Combo. Now, the Wisdom Teeth Combo is pretty simple pretty self-explanatory the combination to the trap is written on your wisdom teeth gotta pull them out pulling teeth out sucks but compared to everything else it's pretty simple b and lastly we have zep's test now everyone thought zep was jigsaw in the first movie however we got the huge plot reveal that jigsaw was of course the dead body in the middle of the bathroom which was john kramer a cancer patient that Zepp and Gordon were looking after. Now, of course, when Adam listens to the tape, we realize that Zepp was just also a pawn in, in all of this. He had poison going through him. The only way he could do, he could get the antidote is if Gordon failed his test. So, of course, he wanted Gordon to fail. But I think it's just such an iconic plot twist to Saw that it gets an so there you have it this is my uh this is my tier list of saw traps if you want to do this for yourself i don't know why you would i'll probably leave it in the description if i remember to but yeah uh i'll see you in the next video <laughs> bye, bye.